people give me shit for spending so much time on camera and sell it. But when hammer drops, these mountain passes and valleys are going to team with people looking for food. Until they thin out. Standing out of sight is going to be my best defense trying to throw flies. I don't want to eat it. This is my new upper torso camo rag. It's made from the remnants of a flex iron PSK smock that is no more. The bottom half is totally destroyed. When I tripped in, there's a zipper right here. The zipper got caught on a uh, root stump that was sticking up and it just totally ripped out the whole bottom of the smock. So I repurposed it. I used up the last bit of double sided camouflage fabric that I have. And I used up the last bit of the uh, Good tan and water camouflage fabric that I had. The distinct difference between this one and the other one is there's no natty, no natty mean less snags, and it's more quiet. The other one is a little bit of rotten, so it's crispy. It's got three pockets in the front, and I also we did face mask. And I'll show more about that later. That's the face mask. Stay in here all the time. And on this side, take the liberty of putting some snips. Some blue crawl and get into some pretty sticky places. Snip off the twigs and get through without making a bunch of aerial sign with them. Get caught up on stuff if I find that I'm gonna get caught up on things. Now what I do with this one. I didn't overload it. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but I took the different strips. Uh, just for example, this is one strip and I fit it like that with the shredded part hanging down. Here's another one. Got one going this way. Got another one going this way. Got another one going straight. And what that does is when it's hanging, if the pieces are like this and like this, they're not going to hang straight down. They're going to hang all twisted. And that is depth and texture in the camouflage pattern. It's a better 3D effect. And as always, Everything's cut in a zigzag, irregular fashion. I took off the flecked iron hood and I added a hood from a, a tan and water reproduction germ smock. And the hood's pretty well made. And I don't know if you can see the different pieces of double sided camouflage fabric. It goes from the green to the brown to the green. To the brown, etc., etc., and it also comes apart and it's double sided there too, so it's a nice, like, lion mane across the hole. I think this will be of more use than the one I made out of the net. Um, I tried to do a good job on it because I used up the last bit of camouflage fabric that I had. Put some foliage loops on the front, on both sides. And I'm just out here today, I'm going to see how it, how it goes. The downside is that it doesn't really allow me to wear it with a rucksack. The upside is I can wear it over top of my wedding. So I'm going to be out here today, I'm going to give it a shot, doing a creep around this place. This is not a ghillie suit. Ghillie suits are something snipers use, and it's for an entirely different purpose, and it's used in an entirely different way. All right, so here's the rag. Everything's sewn on. It, that saved weight and also saved waste material with the knots. The knots never really came untied for me. I never had a problem with that. Um, so everything's sewn on. It saved weight. No net, no nothing. It's going to move around. Um, it is over top of my web gear. And also still get to my knife if I need to cut something. To get to my ammo pouches. 
still get to my pistol. Just for range of movement. There's leaps and bounds ahead of the one that I had before. I'm still get to my knife. I'm a GPS map. I can kind of land that stuff in here. I'm my binoculars in there. Right now I got this big titty looking thing. That's actually the face mask. And that's about it. It took me about eight hours to make it. It was a super pain in the ass. But I think in the end it's it's worth it. It's a lot better product than my previous push rag or camo rag. Disguised as commercial charter flights, same way they did in Afghanistan in '80. Only they were crack airborne outfits. Now they took these passes in the Rockies. So that's what hit Calumet. I guess so. They coordinated with selective nuke strikes, and the missiles were a hell of a lot more accurate than we thought. They took out the silos here in the Dakotas. Key points of communication. Like what? Oh, like Omaha, Washington, Kansas City. Gone. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's right. Filtrators came up illegal from Mexico, Cubans mostly. They managed to infiltrate the SAC bases in the Midwest, several down in Texas, and wreaked a hell of a lot of havoc, I'm here to tell you. They opened up the door down here, and the whole Cuban and Nicaraguan armies come walking right through, roll right up here through the Great Plains. How far did they get? Cheyenne, across to Kansas. We held them at the Rockies and at the Mississippi. Anyway, the Russians reinforced with 60 divisions, sent three whole army groups across the Bering Strait into Alaska, cut the pipeline, came across Canada to link up here in the middle, but we stopped their butt cold. Lines have pretty much stabilized now. What about Europe? I guess they figured, uh, Twice in one century was enough. Let's sit in this one out. I'll accept England. They won't last very long. The Russians need to take us in one piece, and that's why they're here now. That's why they won't use nukes anymore, and we won't either, not on our own soil. The whole damn thing's pretty conventional now. Who knows, maybe next week will be sore. What started it? I don't know. Two toughest kids on the block, I guess. Sooner or later, they're gonna fight. That simple. Maybe somebody just forgot what it was like. Well, who is on our side? 600 million screaming Chinamen. Well, last I heard, there were a billion screaming Chinamen. There were. 